I had a couple people asking me about how I'm rooting these cuttings off of these um, gardenias and the camellias. And tell you the truth, people, it's it's really really simple. I take I take these. Uh oh, is that the roof truss is coming in over there? Yes, it is. They're fixing to put a roof on that thing. Fix and put a roof on that thing. Anyway, they're asking me about this, and I, the only way that I can tell you, I take these, well, I take, I take these little pellets, you know, you soak them in water and they swell up. And then I take my cuttings, like, well, this is not one I'm going to do yet. I'm going to have to trim these down. But I take these cuttings, and I stick them in the root. I put root hormone on the end of them. Now, these will be cut down somewhere. I just had not got two of these just yet. And then I stick it down in this thing. I put it in this little cup. These are bottoms off of soda bottles. And I put the root ball in there. I stick the cutting down in that. Then I got these clear plastic cups, and you can see I got holes stuck in them there because you don't want them to get overheated in there. You want them to be able to have a little ventilation. And then I was just looking at this one. This one is ready. When I see I think it was this one, was it this one? Maybe it wasn't this one. That gone where hold on. As I was saying, when I, I, I check them periodically, and when I see, like there's a root coming through, I know this thing, that's a root there. I know it has rooted. And I take a little cup like this, put it in there like that, And there you go. Now I just did three here. These three are rooted. Now I got some more coming along our camellias and gardenias. This, I don't have a clue what that is. What you doing, baby? Huh? What you doing? You want to go inside? You want to go inside? Hold on. Sandy, Sandy Conway, she, you asked me a question about you want to take a cutting off a money tree. Well, 
I'm assuming this is the money tree that I've got. I've got several different people telling me different things about it, so I don't know, but it looks exactly like the money tree. Um, this one is fairly old. It's about five years old. I just cut the tops out of these. I'm fixing I cut one out about a month ago, and I just cut another one out. And let me show you what what I'm doing. Um, this is one of the this is the top I cut out about two weeks ago, and. I cut all the leaves off except these on the top. I got rooting horn. I, I used um, uh, aloe hormone for that one. And it hasn't started growing any roots yet. Now, this one here is starting to sprout roots down there. I'll pull it out so you can see. But you can see all those roots starting to come out on that. So I guess I'm gonna, it looks like I'm going to have success with it. Um, but that's how, what I've done. And, and uh, now I have seen other people taking to cutting them tops out like that and put hormone on them and then stick them straight down in the dirt and the soil. So I don't know, but this seems to be working for me. And we'll see how this one does. I may take them out and put some more hormone on them, but I, I really hate I hate to give it, I'm not really giving you advice, I'm just showing you what I've done. Because folks, I don't really have a green thumb. I I just bumble through this stuff. And I have failures and I have successes. Um, I've been having a lot of trouble getting, getting a crepe myrtle. To root. Now these are some I cut off down the street the other day, and I've got them in here, and we'll see how that I put hormone on all of them. I'm gonna see how it done. I just showed you about my gardenias, how I'm doing those. These here, I don't know what these are. I know I, I like them; they're variegated, and the the stems on are very long. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna do these the same way I'm doing these gardenias. I'm gonna stick them in a little pot of water with a with a, uh, a pellet and see how that does. And I may leave a few in the water just to see how they root in the water. But that's what I'm doing now. The holly. The holly, I'm not sure how to root these, uh, but I've got several in here. I think these are Stevenson hollies, and I'm going to be putting them into pellets also. Because that seems, because I've done camellias that way, and I've done gardenias that way, but I hadn't done anything else that way but I'm going to try it with the holly, some of them. And some of them I'm just going to leave in water. Um, but that's, you know, uh, Cindy, that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, also, I've got a bunch of these Mexican petunias. I'm trying to get them to root up cut these out there off of mine. I want some different colored ones though. But I'm trying to root those. 
Uh, what else? Well, of course, I got my my golden dewdrops over there in the bottles. I've got about a hundred hundred cuttings over there that I'm going to root, and those are pretty much. I've got that down pat. I root them in the water, but before I put them in the water, I make sure I got a couple of nodes on them stems, and I put the rooting hormone on them, and then put them in the bottle. And about a month, I'll have roots on them things. It may be a little slower because of the cooler weather. I don't know. But anyway, I got ligustrums. I got ligustrums here that I'm trying to root in water. I may wind up putting them in the dirt. But I got several things going on. But I'm not an expert, folks. I'm just, I bumble through this. But I can tell you one thing for sure. I know how to root those golden dewdrops. I, I, I do fantastic with them. And seems like with the with the gardenias, same thing. I have pretty much I have about ninety percent success on these gardenias rooting them with this method that I use. And I, I just set that thing in there and then, and then put that little, put these clear plastic cups over them. And they seem to work pretty good. I wish I could tell you more about that, Cindy Conway, but Cindy with a Y. <laughs> and sometimes now on the roses that I try to root, I have about a 50-50 success rate on the roses. This is one I was trying to root. Had leaves on it and all that stuff, and it turned completely black down there. And it's not, wasn't working. Now I've got another one. Let me show you this one here. I think this is a rose. Yeah, this is the road. Now, this one's doing exceptionally well. But when I stick them down in, uh, you know, I stick them down in the dirt with the rooting hormone on it and get it good and wet, and then I put this bottle over it for humidity, and that seems to work pretty good for me. Uh, here's another one. That, that one's looking really good. Um... Now, some of this, uh, I'm not sure how this is doing. This is azaleas. This is azaleas. I got one, two, three. I got about seven or eight in there, and they seem to be doing good. I give it a little tug to see if it's got showing resistance, and it's showing resistance. So that's telling me that it's forming roots down there. So I think those are going to take. You don't want to tug on them too hard, but if, you know, if they haven't got any roots, they usually just slide right out just with a slight little tug on it. Um, I've got more roses. Some I got roses over there too. I got about five roses over there now. This other, this other thing here, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is some kind of blackberry or raspberry uh, plant, and they're they're not dying out on me, so I don't know if they're going to root or not, but I'm trying. To do that, I may need to put a little more water in there. Yeah, that might be too much water. Yeah, there we go. 
So these these seem to be doing all right, but that that's about all I've got that I'm trying to root right now. And well, I got my celery. I cut the end end off the stalk of celery we had in there, and it's growing roots, and it's growing the stalk of celery. I'm probably gonna go ahead and plant that in the dirt. Uh, and these these things right here this is eggplants and I put it in the water to, to see I put rooting hormone on I put it in the water and guess what it looks like it's growing roots so I got a couple of them going it's already grown a new leaf there But that's pretty much, and then the rubber plant, this one's not done. I have rooted them this way, and it's staying alive. I want to get me a good, good thing of rubber plants going. But that's pretty much it on the stuff. And Cindy, I hope that gives you an idea. I don't know. Uh, I, it just seems to be working this way and if I had another sprout that was suitable on that money tree over there some people tell me that's a chestnut but I don't think so uh, similar leaves and stuff but I'm inclined to believe this is what they call a money tree except mine what confuses me on mine is I got this one I got this one tree limb there But look down here, look at that big ball root thing on it there. And then I got this one coming here, and I may cut this off. If those succeed, I may cut this off and try to root that. But that that's pretty much it. Now this thing lasts, when we moved here last, almost a year ago, we had a cold spell, and I mean, it wiped out a bunch of stuff, and it killed this thing. It, at least I thought it did. It took all the green, froze it off. But then, about a month later, it started sprouting new growth. So, I don't know. Uh, Lisa's give me a name. I forget. It starts with an S. And, and uh, Naparuski give me a name about a chestnut. And then somebody else said it's a money tree. I don't know. But but and I see a lot of those money trees. They they uh, uh, braid. They take two or three plants and braid the tr tree things as they grow. But you'd, you wouldn't be able to braid this. And this spot right here was what my attempt at one time trying to make an air layer. I was going to cut it off right there. I don't like it this tall. But I'm kind of stuck with it. But anyway, that's... That, you know what, let me stand up a minute. I want to see if I got some new growth coming there where I... Uh, where I uh, took that cutting. And yes, I do. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but I see a little thing shooting up right there. How about that? Yeah. Anyway, I hope that helped. I hope.
up to him. Boy, look at my Christmas cactus here. Uh, my wife's Christmas cactus. This is hers. It's going to have a lot of blooms on it directly. And my cabbage, my cabbage is going to town down there. Uh, that one big one there, that's going to be my first head. And this one here is starting to kick butt. But I don't know how much sun them things require, but uh, they get a little sun, don't get a whole lot. But anyhow, that's my, that's going to be my little short video for today. And somebody I think it was Lisa said her her relatives used to call this a, 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 a elephant ears and they never had a bulb this sure don't have a bulb I thought it was a caladium but my caladiums I got they were bulbs and I I've already got replanted them bulbs um, and this right here, let me put this in the, I don't understand about fruit flies. They're not around, but you put out a piece of fruit or something and leave it, all of a sudden you got them little bugs flying all around it. I don't understand that. Where do they come from? Even in the house, you leave something sitting out in the house and all of a sudden you got fruit flies. But this here is supposed to be lettuce. I don't, it, I never seen lettuce that looked like that. Uh, but I sowed lettuce seed all in that. But all I've got is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All I've got is eight. However, this is supposed to be the kind that you just piece off the leaves when you need them. It don't make a head. And it grows new stuff. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And I, I'll tell you something else, too, about rooting folks these here these are uh, oh uh, <laughs> oh my gosh I'm drawing look at them flies around here from where that fruit juice is at uh, hibiscus they're hibiscus and I, I've had an incredible success rate with the hibiscus just amazing and and I I was able to do a air layering on that camellia tree around there and I got a beautiful thing off of that that that's doing great and there's another hibiscus down there now something else I'm doing great is that azalea right there I did an air layering on that and had success so I can't wait to see that thing start start blooming little PS I want to show you these I may take them up this way as you can see here I keep these under humidity dome and I know, like I said, I've got a couple of hollies I'm trying to root in there. Most of these right here is gardenias. And these are uh, hibiscus. Hibiscus and gardenias. So I got these, instead of sitting them in the cups like this, I set it in this thing here. It's got water in the bottom, and then I got all these pellets in there that I'm using 
and we'll see how this does. These look great. These really look great. They sure do. Look great. I hope I hope these hollies root. I've never rooted hollies before. Okay. But anyhow, that's going to be the video. I'm going to try to do some cleaning up today around here. Um and figure out what I'm going to do. My carrots is looking good, too. I may have to go in there and thin those things out. And all these pots right here with, with these little stalks sticking up, that's the uh, uh, pine cone ginger lily. I dug them up from around there and put them in pots. And we'll see if these start to grow in here in a month or two. I don't know. But I didn't dig them all. I didn't even get close to digging them all up. Because once I found out that when you sell these rhizomes on these things, you don't dig them up and put them on a shelf somewhere. You, uh, you dig them up and ship them the same day that you... In other words, when the day you're shipping, that's when you dig them up. And I'm glad I've seen that. Okay, now. Folks, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And I love you. And you know I do because I tell you. I tell you, I do. So I'll see you.